Hi, welcome back to my channel, Cosmic Inside Astrology. I am your co-pilot, Christina. If you have a Leo rising moon or sun, this is your July 2023 astrology forecast. And uh, let's see what kind of opportunities it will bring to you. We do have 21 uh, aspects this month, and uh, that is a very active sky. Nine of them is really auspicious, the other not. So we have two grand cross. One is out of sign, one is in sign, which is really challenging. And the lunation, the full moon and the new moon also aspect it twice. And we have Venus going retrograde in your sign and also Chiron going retrograde in a fellow uh, fire sign of uh, Aries for you. Okay, so let's see what's going on for you. The, the month's going to start out actually with Mercury and the Sun over here, uh, Kazimi, okay? So it's going to happen actually in uh, nine degrees, exactly nine degrees, and uh, this Kazimi. And it's very, very uh, auspicious because of the combust when, when the, the Mercury or any other planet is in the center of the heart, uh, that's not so uh, not so great when they are conjuncting because the sun has a huge energy. It's shining so bright. So actually it's taking away all the, um, the shine from the other planets. But actually the sun rules you. So for you, it's extremely positive. And Kazemi, it's only 17 minutes uh, between the moon, between the sun and Mercury. Uh, that is really successful benefic, uh, magnificent, uh, magical, okay, so so that's create some kind of magics in heaven, and it is in your 12th house, 12th house is everything with hidden matters, it's hidden enemies, it's also rules, you know, the Pisces, so it's rules arts, it's rules the unprivileged, it's rules vacation rentals, pharmaceuticals, it's rules addiction centers, hospice, hospitals, so over here, if you are applying for a job, in those fields, you're most likely going to get it. You can start a vacation rental business or, you know, you can go actually to addiction center if you want to and get rid of some kind of addiction. So that's a healing into this for you. Uh, definitely you can have a contract or you are working maybe on a script, a movie script and, and writing and, and that is going to be well received and really successful later on. All right, so that's Kazemi is going to actually uh, sextile with Jupiter. Jupiter is in your 10th house, so you are kind of golden child of the year uh, in career, okay? Because Jupiter in Taurus is actually uh, wealth and abundance and luxury. And it's actually went in your 10th house of career, purpose, reputation, honor. And then it is going to bring in some kind of amazing career for you. And it's sextiling with this Kazemi. So the career could come really, really soon for you. So this is this month will be really uh, pivotal uh, um, for you. And for multiple reasons. Because of Venus also goes retrograde in your sign and because of the North Node going to go to the fellow uh, fire sign areas, which is going to trine with your sign, with your ascendant moon or, or sun sign, anything what you have in Leo. I have Leo moon, so it's going to be really great for emotion and motherhood and nurturing myself. So yes, it is. it could be very good for you guys. Okay, so let's see. On the... Second, uh, we're going to have actually a Venus and Uranus uh, square. So this is a little bit challenging. This is a little bit like uh, like a fighting, like an uh, like a Martian aspect over here. The the square. So it brings some kind of challenge, and it's going to Uranus is here in your tenth and first house Venus. So it could be like your going to your your payment going to get delayed. Maybe you are paid through some kind of cash app or or you know for your work or or Zelle or whatever you know, and then uh, it could get delayed. Uh, so on the other hand, it could be also something with uh, like you can get some kind of. Uh, um, on social media, you can get some kind of um, stalker. So be careful with that. Um, or it could be someone from your work 
but you don't know at the beginning, but later on you will find out and it could be someone who is harassing you at work, but it's only going to be through some kind of written or some kind of, um, or, or somebody is trying to get into your computer at work and stealing something from you, stealing your data, stealing your, your ideas. So careful with that, definitely. All right, what else could indicate? So let's go and let's move to the full moon. The full moon going to happen on the third in Capricorn and it's going to happen in 11 degrees. So that's actually going to be the second decan. So it's going to get a Taurian flavor. So it's going to be sprinkled with a little bit of Venus energy. So Venus is love and attraction and currency also rules currency and beauty. So, and Venus is in your sign, get ready, getting ready to retrograde. And um, and this Capricornian energy ruled by Saturn because of the full moon is ruled by Saturn. Full moon is also always to letting go of something, ending something, ending a contract, or a work. So if you have an especially uh, Leo rising, then it's going to happen in your sixth house. And then it could affect something for you with... Um, with letting go of a work or letting go of an animal. Maybe you have a sick animal and it's ready to go. And, and it could be something like uh, your daily routine is changing. It's need to be transformed. Or you are maybe took supplements, but you think the supplements are not serving your health anymore and you're going to stop taking that. Um, it could be that as well. Or actually, if you have a tenant or if you are having a tenancy, you might going to give it up and looking for something else. So that could change your living situation. Why? Because the moon rules real estate, rules homes, rules tenancy as well. Uh, anything with your living situation and in your six house of tenancy, it could be like, okay, I'm letting go of that. And also this full moon going to oppose Mercury because the Kazemi happened just two days before. Mercury is something with communication vehicle, you, you know, like there is some kind of secret enemies, uh, which is uh, talking behind your back and actually is going to bring some kind of emotional turmoil in your life at work. And it's happening at work, actually. Or it could be some kind of difficulties with a family member because Mercury is in uh, a cancer and the cancer is family. So or it could be something with a living situation with your with your tenancy, as I said, and they are not really supportive for you, or you don't feel supported by family, or by your landlord, or you are, it could be also like you are actually losing a co-worker, and, and, you know, like, it could be something through, like, they, they're just going to get fired, or, you know, unfortunately, because of the full moon, also, it's an ending, it could create an ending, why? Because Pluto just went retrograde, in the sixth house, so definitely it could be a death of an animal or co-worker as well, or tenant. Uh, so, but on the other hand, full moon is going to sextile uh, with, uh, with Saturn, and Saturn is the ruler of this full moon, so it is a saving grace in this, actually. So whatever happening here, whatever, whatever you have to say goodbye to, Later on, this situation going to turn for your favor. So if you have to give up a living situation, you're going to get something better or you're going to move somewhere you can meet your, your love because six houses is soulmate as well, right? And, and you, you're saying goodbye to some, but, but on the other hand, it's bringing in a new one uh, later on, not just right now, but later on. Uh, okay. And also this moon is also going to uh, trine with Jupiter. This is a blessing here, right? So Jupiter is in Taurus and because it's got a Taurian flavor in second decan and uh, actually uh, supported by Venus, which is in your sign, uh, that is really, really positive over here because of, uh, okay, so you might have to let go of a work, right? But actually it's bringing in a, purposeful new career where you're going to be, become excellent in it and you're going to thrive in it and, and it's going to be your purpose and it's going to be a blessing in your life. Um, and it's not only going to be a job, it's going to be a career which is which you're going to do it from love and, and you're going to really shine in that. 
Okay, on the other hand, uh, let's see what S is going to go on. On the seventh, we're going to have Mercury and Uranus sextile. And on the ninth, Mercury going to trine with Neptune. Neptune is in your eighth house. That is shed resources, that is banking, that is detectives over here. Actually, um, Neptune could be a thief or it could be something mischievous, someone who lies, uh, right? Uh, so... So, but it's a trine. So it is actually going to bring in. So uh, let me see. So Uranus, uh, it's going to, Mercury going to sextile with Uranus and trine with Neptune. Okay. All right. So Mercury sextile Uranus could bring in an opportunity, a support system for you in your career. But the support system is going to actually be behind the scene. They don't want to show themselves. Why? Because of maybe you're getting into a position, but the support system going to be a very influent uh, family member. Okay, so for example, I'm just brainstorming. You want to become a mortgage broker or get into to a stock market or something like that. And a stock, stock broker, something with money, okay? Or maybe being a funeral home director, or maybe uh, buying a sex store, or something with eight house matters anyway. A surgeon, whatever. And you need a letter, Mercury, a letter, right? And Mercury is in cancer, so it's coming from a family member, but they don't have to say it's family. They're going to support you because otherwise you wouldn't get that position or you wouldn't get that loan or you wouldn't get help from, from banks or or uh, eight houses research or also those are detectives as well. So you wouldn't get help because the proof is coming from a family and it's really close to you. So See, so they have to stay behind the scene. Okay, but anyway, it's a good energy. And then on uh, on the ninth, I told you what's happening. Yes, so then we move forward. And then on the 10th, Pluto and Mercury going to oppose each other. So Pluto then 29 degrees, Mercury coming to 29 degrees here. It's going to oppose each other. So it's going to be some kind of conflict with a tenant or with actually a co-worker or with... Uh, actually with someone uh, in in either it could be something with with a yoga studio or in your gym so you are going to work out for example and you have a trainer and the trainer is really uh, controlling and manipulative and and you want to get back your power you want to talk how you feel and what kind of help you need but they are not willing to listen to you and that could create some kind of conflict then it's going to actually making a square with the nodes, right? The nodes is still in Scorpio, the south node. It's in zero degrees, very pivotal, zero degrees, uh, Taurus. So it's taking, actually creating a, a T-square, not T-square, T-square, but it's a grand cross and it's going to be out of sign grand cross, but very influential. So work and family home, hidden enemy. So you know what? It could be actually also, like you will find out, a family member, uh, an other family member, one is supporting you, right, to get whatever it, you need to get the job or the loan. Uh, the other family member may be not supporting you, and it could be your actually, you feel like uh, that person is your enemy, going to become your enemy. Someone is uh, working behind the scene against you, because they don't want you to start that business what you wanted to start or or they do. and maybe okay so simple as it is pluto is notice pluto is underworld it could create criminal activities right it can be something with drugs with obsession with sex sex industry and it could be simple as it is uh, you are selling something and your mother is disagreeing or you are in sex industry and your father is disagreeing so some kind of conflict between that. So they are not supporting what who you want to make money somehow. Uh, and, you know, because they are worried about your honor, your reputation in life, because the notes are involved and the notes are in the 10th house. It's your reputation that's honor for you. Okay, so what else is happening here? So on the 14th, we're going to have actually Uranus and the sun 
sextai, so that's good. Um, and later on, on the 17th, uh, the new moon going to sextai with Uranus as well, and it's going to also trine with Neptune. The new moon going to happen 24 degrees Cancer, so it's going to happen in your 12th house. It's a new beginning. It's it's almost like you want to, to uh, heal yourself. It's mental health healing, meditation, retreat. It is like you want to create a family on your own, perhaps. It is like, I'm ready. I'm ready to, to create something for myself. I'm ready to nurture myself. I'm ready to take in some kind of healing mentally or or on my subconscious. I, I'm ready to go to to go and try hypnosis and go back and and heal myself the the womb the the wound from from previous life or from my childhood. I'm ready to do that. Um, but it's uh, you know moon. It's a new beginning. The way you are nurtured, the way you are nurturing others. It's in your twelfth house, so it's hidden somehow. So it's not necessarily expressing all the feelings over here. However, because it's going to trine with the fellow Piscean energy, and actually it is uh, Piscean flavored because of uh, it's in the third decan, and third decan, the third water sign from Cancer is Pisces. So it's going to be blessed with Neptune and Jupiter. And because of it's also trining Neptune, it's forgiveness. It is like forgiving for a mother figure, or forgiving for somebody is forgiving you if you are a mother. So, you know, like it's multiple things going on. It could be something with inheritance. Some of you will get an inheritance through a grandmother figure or a mother figure. And then, then you know, like th then it's going to be some kind of emotion. And during the process of the inheritance, when you have to actually go there and get it or sign the papers or some kind of trust, that it's going to involve a lot of emotions and that it's going to be a lot of uh, healing and forgiveness in it. Um, with Uranus, when it's going to sextile with Uranus, that's really good for, for your career. It's really good to invest. If you have a business, if you are a shareholder, if you, you know, like you, you are investing and dealing, that's, uh, that's good for uh, artificial intelligence, uh, computers, uh, digital currency, uh, so, so yeah, it's good for anything with uh, electric cars, uh, or it's good actually to, to fix your electric car if you have, or some kind of electric issue in the car. So yes, it could be that as well. It could be also like you are willing to open a new business and it could be a vacation rental, or it could be, yeah, yeah, that kind of situation. All right, and then, this is the same day when the nodes are changing signs and the north node is going to go 29 degrees Aries. So it's going to actually trine with your sign. So with your moon or, you know, like ascendant or, or sun sign. So it's really, really good because of the north node, Rahu. It is the best that you haven't been yet. It's your career. It's your purpose in life. It's bringing in something new in your life. And going to your ninth house, it could be like you're going to become an ambassador, an attaché, you're going to go and learn a new language. Uh, if you are ready to get married again during this 18 months, it could be your second marriage coming to you. It could be a foreigner though, right? Because it's in your ninth house, so maybe it's a foreigner to you. And then uh, it could also bring in something with publishing, journalism, publish a book or, you know, like, um, like you can be signed up for a, if you are doing any sport, professional sport, you can sign for a foreign team, actually. So that, that would be really, really good for you. And the salt node is going to your fourth, to your third house. Oh, yeah. So lots of friends and, um, a changing neighborhood and and it could bring in some kind of issue with a sibling some kind of conflict uh, losing communication not getting connected with a sibling so it could be difficult it could be something with niece nephews or uncles and uh, aunts so it could be maybe you know like loss of something with a cousin or or 
uh, or anchors and not to communicate with them. So something is around that, like a neighbor also making you annoyed and, and you don't want to, you stop communicating. All right. Uh, also, it could be giving up some, you know, like if you actually had some kind of skill-based education, you are finishing it right now, or if you had some kind of online school, or if you were writing a book, you are actually finishing the book right now, and you're ready to publish. So that's that's really, really welcoming. That's beautiful. Mm. Over there. All right. So let's go to the 20s. And the 20 is going to happen like the Sun and Neptune going to prime and Mars, Saturn going to oppose each other. So what's happening with Mars and Saturn? Mars uh, going to go on July 11th already in your second house. That is your financial sphere. Saturn is at your bank account system. Saturn over there is restriction. Seize your bank account, steal your bank account, uh, Oh, seize, seize your bank account somehow. Mars going there is going to fight, fight for my earnings, fight, fight for for something. All right, uh, what is creating with with uh, stock market, with shareholders, with 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 investment? So you want to to get back what rightfully yours, and we, you will have to be advocate for it. You will need to do a lot of um, detailed researches and it's going to be annoying. Virgo is ruled by Mercury. That's paperwork and 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 it's a lot of activity over there and it's going to get overwhelming and tiring. Um, yes, uh, but definitely it could be some kind of fight with a father figure for inheritance. Uh, as well. So, you know, before when I said something could come from a mother figure, a grandmother figure, an inheritance, maybe there is a father who doesn't feel like to 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 share that with you. And and Mars is the child over here, Saturn is the father, Saturn is the general, Mars is the the, the soldier. So, you know. It's, it's like it's conflict with an authority figure, conflict with a father figure, a substitute father figure, conflict with an ex. It could be an ex-partner. And there is something coming back with tax, like what was what happened years before. And um, it could be like uh, something with an ex and, 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 you know, information is coming back and it's going to be a fight and it's going to be very annoying. All right. And on the other hand, let's see. Okay, so let's move forward. So I'm going to go to the 21st till the 25th, then the other grand course is happening and it's going to be between um, Pluto and Sun. The Sun is moving actually to Leo, to your sign on the 22nd. So it's going to oppose over here to, to Pluto, right? And um, And then... No, the 21st, actually, when it's going to be in 29 degrees, still cancer in your 12th house, it's going to oppose Pluto. And because of the nodes are already in Aries and Libra, it's going to be already a, a real 29 degrees, karmic degrees, huge transformation, huge change at work. And you're going to actually uh, give up some kind of addiction. It's going to be some kind of power trigger it could be something with 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 stalkers it could be something with uh with uh oh, free and yeah you know stalker could be someone who is maybe a friend or as i said careful also with an ex-partner over here uh, because of it could be involved because that is a lot of Capricornian energy, 29 degrees Pluto and Pluto and Capricorn ruled by Saturn. As I said, in your eight host could be something with an ex-partner there, either an ex-partner death, and it could bring in something with tax that he didn't or she didn't solve before. And, you know, you have to deal with that and uh, it's going to make you mad. But it's also could be something with, with your work and hidden enemies, which is going to influence your traveling. So you will have to work a lot more to, to actually um, 
prove yourself and that's why you won't be able to go for that vacation that you planned right or because of it's it's definitely major transformation it's transformation in your head and in your mental head and and um, yeah all right and then on the 27th we're going to have venus retrograde which is going uh, retrograde in your first house so you're going to actually go back to the way you were before. Venus retrograde is not good for you guys. It's in your first house to do any plastic surgery. You will get swollen up. It could go wrong. So please don't do anything for three four months. No Botox, no nothing like that. Because it could be really, I mean, really turning out like, oh, you don't want that. Inflammation and, and they're going to ruin your face because first house is face, right? And then, on the other hand, what I wanted to say, um, uh, Mercury is going to come actually to Leo, and it's coming to Leo, Mercury on the 11th of July, but it's going to conjunct with Venus retrograde at 22 degrees in your first house. So that's something with contract, that's something with with uh, with maybe creating your own company. It's something with money. Maybe you're going to be capable finally to sign something with money. You get a payout date and 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 then you will be really happy about that. It could be also something with um uh, with joy and pleasure based businesses if you uh, if you are uh, signing a record label uh, or or joy and pleasure based anything, it could be that. It could be an agreement between you and the romantic partner. Okay, we're going to get uh, into relationship in a serious one and we need to do a prenup before. So something uh, sorted out with finances between you two. Okay, so that's it. And Chiron also goes actually to retrograde in your ninth house. So um, the opportunity, what you thought, it will be uh, lost uh, for going abroad and and a foreign trip or get, for example, maybe a passport or whatever. Right now you are capable to get uh, everything back to you because Chiron going back, it's healing that kind of wound over there. Or it could heal a relationship with an older sibling as well. And, and you know, some kind of, if you have something with publication or with your social media channel, uh, it could heal that as well or bring back an opportunity for you. Okay, guys, if you loved my video, please subscribe and like my videos, comment below, anything. Just say thank you for all of my videos so then, then it could actually recognize me and I would really appreciate that. I can make more videos for you and I can share my knowledge here and I can guide you through your spiritual journey. Thank you for your intention. If you would like to have a personal reading with me, please don't hesitate to, to check out my website, which is www.urbanwitch.org. Thank you so much for your intention, and I will be back in August. Bye for now.